here at PAX Unplugged 2019, and we're at Yellow Games. And I'm here with... John. And uh, tell us what you got going here, John. Ton of stuff going on here. Of course, we're still talking about the Loki line. This is a great consumer base for Loki. Mm. A lot of people here at PAX Unplugged that aren't our traditional board gamers. So really getting to introduce them to things. And if you look around the room, so many kids in this room. So we've taught SOS Dino so many times that I've run out of it here at the show. Wish that I brought a little bit more of it. And of course, Farmini is sitting on a demo table now, teaching kids how to draft. If you're not familiar with the Loki line, it's designed to teach a single core concept of gaming to kids one at a time. So we can teach them card drafting, and then we can teach them co-op, and then we can teach them some matching or some press your luck. And as they get a little older, they already know the concepts. We can put those concepts together and teach them King of Tokyo or the next thing that they want to learn. Yeah. Uh, I was just mentioning to you before about how SOS Dino is a big hit in my library. Uh, all the kids there love it. They love the, the, the storyline where they're trying to survive these, these volcanoes and you got to be kind of creative. It's not difficult, but it's, you got to be just a little be careful about where you're going. You don't want to get trapped between the, the lines of lava. <laughs> Correct. And for kids, it's this great opportunity to recognize patterns mm -hmm. and to both look at a board and say this is a potential danger spot the tile the next tile could kill this dinosaur so i might not want to do that i might want to work in a different fashion and because it's completely no text it's completely picture based you can play it as young as five and six with a little bit of help yeah. package says seven plus on it but that's so that you better understand the rules yeah. but i think that's what's interesting about your line of games i hope our viewers don't mind me gush about yellow games. <laughs> I don't mind uh, at all. <laughs> <laughs> but like even something as like made for adults, quote unquote, like Ishtar. Yes. Like I played Ishtar, and um, yes, it's it's I guess it's geared toward adults, but kids can play it. It's, it's all about learning how to use your resources. I love the storyline of Ishtar, yes. where you're a gardener and you're just trying to uh, plant your gardens at the right place. But you got to be kind of careful where you plant your gardens. Um, you got to watch out for your competition because you want to be the best gardener in all of yes. Babylon. You know, so. And Ishtar for me has been fantastic because it's all the hallmarks of a Bruno Catala game. Bruno, of course, has won awards designing tile laying games. And Bruno has worked with us in the past. Kanagawa is a Bruno title as well. But like most Bruno games, there's no one right way to win a game of Ishtar. I can just build trees the whole time. I can play a game where I never put an assistant in a garden and I can win that way. Or I can just put together a giant flower bed, and I can win that way. I've won a game now where I just unlocked the ability that gets me points for my gems and then never spent a gem. Just start covering those gems and collect them and hoard them to score victory points. There's not a right way to win. And I love games like that. It's just this endless puzzle. So when you take a great game designer like Bruno and you add yellow, where people always think of art, they always think of table presence, you get something that's just so much fun to yeah. play. So let's talk about the future a little bit. Let's. Or the cop apocalypse, maybe? <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about, actually. <laughs> so uh, King of Tokyo Dark, is that the name, official this name is. for it? King of Tokyo Dark Edition is what we're calling this. Very noir, 1920s, old detective feeling in its artwork. Claymation King Kong type of thing? Yeah. Okay. Still in Tokyo. Not the game you've always been playing, though. This is not a reskin of King of Tokyo in new artwork. This is a brand new game. Okay. We announced it at Essen, and we're slowly rolling things out a piece at a time to everybody. So I can't even tell you everything about this yet. I can tell you the Gigazor and the King are back, because you have to have them to play King of Tokyo. Here at PAX Unplugged, we're showing off Alienoid for the first time ever. Okay. So we know Alienoid's back. But well, we're going to keep doing this all the way through until April 1st, April, where we'll play one big joke on you and finally announce the sixth monster. So real slowly between now and April, you'll get some descriptions because there's a new mechanic here. If you look down that side of the board, you'll see a counter, but we're not going to tell you what we're counting yet. There's a couple of new variants and some new rules, and we're going to slowly announce these things a piece at a time until April 1st. And then King of Tokyo hits your stores in April, late April. April 24th is our release date. Right. Why do you think that the King of Tokyo lot, King, King of Tokyo, King of New York, and the little expansions, you come out for it, why do you think it's become such so popular with, with uh, players? Ultimately, King of Tokyo is about one thing, right? 
we get to grab a handful of awesome dice. Like you can't not love King of Tokyo dice. They're chunky and they feel good and they've got that great icons on them. So we throw cool dice and then we beat up our friends. I don't know how you would have really messed that up and made it unpopular. <laughs> <laughs> True, true. But that's King of Tokyo at its core. Awesome dice and that experience. Beating up on our friends and fighting over Tokyo and spending energy on cool cards. We still get to do that here. Okay. But there's a little layer on top. There's some things that you'll see where in old King of Tokyo, you'd have looked at a dice roll and gone, ooh, I don't want it. You might want that die roll now. Things are a little different in Tokyo. Okay. Okay. So... Anything on the horizon also coming up? In January, the expansion for the Big Book of Madness comes out, the fifth element. So Maxime Ramborg, of course, is back with us designing an expansion. It adds a new type of magic to the game. You're going to get dark magic in, the, in here. And it has some drawbacks to it. So it's powerful, but there's things you have to deal with to make sure that you're not overly cursing yourself. So it adds another level of challenge, and it changes the core mechanics of the game. It's not just new stuff for the game, you know. You're going to change that core mechanic just enough that it's a new challenge that you're all working together on. Well, I'm looking forward to all your stuff. You know, I am too. Again, a great collection of games. Uh, where can people check out more of your work or more of your games? Um, of course, you can get everything at yellowusa.com, but really go visit your local stores.